God. Enter with courts with praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your hearts, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Jesus has made me glad. Enter his courts with thanksgiving in your hearts, for he has made me glad. Good morning, my dear sisters and brothers. Good morning, morning Father. Father. This Mass is offered for the departed soul of Mariam Burki by Mrs. Rose Joseph, the soul of Bella Fernandez by Peter Fernandez family, soul of Victoria Sebastian by Julian and family, for the soul in purgatory by Sharon and family, and also we pray for special intention of Robert and Paul Raj for starting the new business. May God be with them, offered by their families. And also for the intention of Lakshmi for a marriage and a job, intention of Lakshmi for deliverance from all evil mother's conversion. And also we offer thanksgiving to Sacred Heart of Jesus by Augustine for the gift of new job. And also we place all our prayer intentions and also remember the Society of Jesus, all the Jesuits congregation and the priest and religious. Let us begin the celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, today our Holy Mother Church celebrates the feast of St. Ignatius belongs to Loyola, a place in Spain. Ignatius of Loyola, we call him a founder of Order of Jesus Christ, called the Jesuits. So today, Jesuits have done a lot of great work in the field of faith formation, in the field of Christian education, to give Christ through the education to many. Very especially, we remember all those who are dedicated priests came all the way from Spain to India, very especially to Tamil Nadu, from there, they started the mission of God, the Jesuits, spread everywhere in the northern part of India too, and they worked a lot. Many died. One of the great saints after Ignatius of Loyola is Francis Xavier, belongs to a Jesuit. So he became a role and powerful instrument, bringing Jesus and mass conversion and also a mass baptism given to all the fisher flocks in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu, and other part of India. So let us thank him for all the blessing that God has brought through Ignatius Loyola to the Holy Mother Church. He became a great counter-reformer during the time of church had a problem like Protestantism, and the church was divided. So today, I thank God for such a powerful saint he has sent, and today in our midst, he's still living with us. And he said his motto, all for the greater glory of God. This should be the motor of even everybody. Whatever we do, as St. Paul says, let it be for the greater glory of God. As we begin this Holy Eucharist, ask Jesus to forgive our sins. Times we all made all for the greater glory of human being. But let us come back to God, ask him sorry. Once again, like Ignatius Loyola say, all for the greater glory of God. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who raised up Saint Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your holy name, grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. In the beginning of the region of Jehokim, the son of Joshua, the king of Judah, these words came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah, which comes to worship in the house of the Lord. All the words that I command you to speak to them, do not hold back a word. It may be they will listen, and everyone turn from his evil ways, that I may repent of evil which I intend to do to them because of their evil doings. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me, to walk in the law which I have sent before you, and to heed the words of my servants, the prophets whom I sent to you urgently, though you have not heeded, then I will make his house like Siloch, and I will make the city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking, all that the Lord had commanded to him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied? the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and the city shall be desolate with, without inhabitant. And all the people gathered about Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Your response shall be, In your great mercy answer me, O Lord. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. More numerous than the heirs on my head are those who hate me without cause. Many are those who attack me, enemies with lies. What I have never salted, how can I restore your response? In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame has covered my face. To my own kin in I, I have become the outcast, uh, stronger than the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me, and taunt against you fall on me. Your response? In your in great, great mercy, mercy, answer me, O Lord. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord, with your salvation that never fails. Your response? In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. Please raise up for the gospel acclamation. God has spoken to his people. Hallelujah. And his words are words of wisdom. 
The word of the Lord abides forever. That word is the good news which was preached for you. God has spoken to his people. Hallelujah. And his words are words of wisdom. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At the time, coming to his own country, Jesus taught them in the synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not honored without honor except in his own country and in his own house. And he will not do many miracles and works wonders because of their unbelief. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and his own house. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 56 and 58. Dear sisters and brothers, this word is very familiar, a powerful word for us. A prophet is not accepted in his own hometown and houses because people take offense at him. From our childhood, they have seen us. As we grow, they are being with us. They find difficult, hard for them to accept certain qualities that we have. That is what Jesus, first of all, is human being. Because God took flesh, born as human. But there is something very powerful word in theology, we call it as a progressive revelation. What does it mean? Progressive revelation means slowly, slowly, step by step, God was revealing that Jesus is not only just an ordinary human being born, but he's a God. God was taken a flesh that is called progressive revelation. How this progress is revelation? The first thing, certain commentaries you have to see. We have Mother Mary's uh, books. Uh, there are so many followers have written. The Gospel of Mary. There are Gospel of Peter. There are a lot of apocrypha writings are there. Very specially, we got the Mariology, the book of Mother Mary, is given. The every act of Jesus as he was born, we have seen up to Gospel of Luke, chapter 2 and 3 speaks about this. Jesus was found in the temple at the age of 13. After that, there is no any record of Jesus. Up to age of 30, when he starts his ministry, after he gets all the temptation, he runs over the temptation, comes to the wilderness and starts a ministry. In Gospel of Mark, we see chapter 1 itself, he starts proclaiming the word of God. But what happened from the child, that means from the time he was born, up to the age of 30, a lot of things were happening. There are beautiful things have been written. And Mother Mary book is there, the Mariology book, that he made little clays, in the, out of the clay, made some birds, made the birds to come to life. He made, that time itself, some kind of dolls which started having life. Those things and all is there. Because being written out of the curiosity, out of the devotion they had on Mother Mary, as if Mother Mary has seen a share with the people. But these things might have happened. That's the reason we call it a progressive revelation. Day to day life, Jesus worked a lot of wonders because slowly he was revealing himself to others. As well as sometimes it's been said that Jesus himself was not aware that he is a son of God and he is a God. And God has to give him slowly the maturity for him. Understand about himself that he is God. So like that, the revelation was keep on happening in him. That is what we call it, a progressive revelation. And the people were watching whatever happening. 
and everything they took for granted. Like other children, how they keep on doing it, they considered even Jesus also the same consideration. When Jesus reached at the age of 29, 30, he started proclaiming the word of God. And the wonders and miracles that he was working, people without own knowledge, they accepted him as a rabbi. And he got a chance and opportunity to go to synagogues to proclaim the word of God. And this was, God has given the grace for him, the gift for him. But one thing we should make sure that Jesus is not a trained scribe, a trained Pharisee, a trained synagogue leader, nothing. Because Jesus is an ordinary carpenter's son. Because he was born through Mother Mary and father, foster father is Joseph. Obviously, everybody will identify each and every human being through their father. He's a son of so-and-so. She's a daughter of so-and-so. And later, a mother of the particular person. They'll identify one by one. And the father becomes important there. And it was a trend that's been followed. Whatever the trade of the father, the son has to continue. That was there, even the Israel customs, even in our own country, and in this European world, too, everywhere it's happening. But today, because of the technology, because of the growth of consumerism, the materialism, the things have been changed. But those days, they have to follow the trade of the father. But Jesus was following the trade of the father as well as when he had the mission, completely he came to know that he is son of God. A maturity, he became a rabbi. But according to the people, a rabbi should be a trained fellow, go to the scribe school, Pharisee school. Jesus didn't go to any kind of school. That was the offense they take at him. How come he has not gone to school? He has not been the disciple of so-and-so teacher, a rabbi. He has got the wisdom, he has got the knowledge. He took offense at him. Another word I can use the word jealousy, selfish. That he has shining like a morning star, proclaiming the word of God without any teacher. But the people don't know his own teacher, he himself, and he is a God. He's a student of the Heavenly Father. He's a child of the Heavenly Father. That is what the mission has come. And the Satan made a lot of conspiracy against him, used the people, offenses. Even now also we see, you know, in our own churches, in our own family, own community, how the Satan works against a person. If somebody works a one does a miracle, somebody preaches, somebody shines very good in our community, like in the Legion of Mary, or like in the liturgy community, or in our own formation houses. This and all, the Satan takes offense, and Satan uses his people. But today, we need to know very well, before we take offense at somebody, as the help of the Holy Spirit. The Lord has to guide us. We have been called to help. We are called to help. We are called to encourage. In this situation, we have to reflect on today's first reading. We see Prophet Jeremiah as an anointed person sent by God. Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 26, one onwards, God calls Jeremiah and says, Go and proclaim my word of God to those people who have become a stiff neck, who don't want to listen to me. But still, one more chance I'll give them. If they repent and come back to me, whatever in anger I said that I'm going to destroy, I'm going to take it back. If they repent, definitely no Babylon will come, no Assyrians will come. I will restore all the blessings. Jeremiah goes and proclaims as God said. But what happened? The Satan took offense against him. His own friends, his own people came against him, bounced on him. They wanted to kill him because he spoke the word of God. He said, the temple of the Lord himself will be destroyed because for them, temple is there means that God is there in that place. They completely forgot that Yahweh is existing there. For them, temple is very important. He said, if you don't believe in Yahweh, come back to him, it will become like a shalon. Shalon means it's a place God destroyed the temple and the people inside the temple. The prophets, the scribes, the leaders, the priests, everybody joined. They want to kill Prophet Jeremiah. God again gets vexed. And that is the time God sends Babylonian. In 586, they come and destroy after this reading. The entire week, you'll be having Prophet Jeremiah giving warning sign for us. And very soon, we'll be reaching to transfiguration in this month of August. We see, because the transformation, that's why I said that, a progressive revelation. In transfiguration, the complete revelation God gave that Jesus is the Son of God. So, my dear sisters and brothers, we are living in the same ancient world of Jewish Israelites. In spite of being in 20th, 21st century, we are lacking faith, we are lacking trust in God, and we are far away from God. 
This pandemic has to bring closer to God more and more. But what's happening? God is making us to come closer to closer, like Jeremiah saying to the people, but what are we doing it? We're taking the reason of this pandemic, going far away from God, going far away from the Holy Eucharist, going far away from devotion of Mother Mary, going far away from the devotion of the liturgy. We should be very careful because Satan is taking offense at us. There are so many people, so-called Catholics, Christians, in the tag, but they become an obstacle for you. Don't go to church. Don't go to prayer. Everywhere, the pandemic is there. The virus is there. My dear sisters and brothers, virus is nowhere. Virus is in our own mind. Virus is in our own tongue. Virus is there in our own heart. When the Lord is for us, we can be against us. Follow strictly the norms of what the church has been given to you. Follow strictly what the civil has given the norms to follow. And by following those norms, don't forget the norm that God has set for us. Believing in Him, trusting in Him, and remain faithful to Him. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine, work of a human and it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit, contract, heart, may we accept it, O Lord. May our sacrifice this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice, yours, may be acceptable, God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands, for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May these offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius of Loyola be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made the font of all holiness may sanctify us too in the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you made your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. The great example lends us courage. The fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave a disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave a disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and when we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory, O Lord, until you come in glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity, together Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We remember all our departed brothers, sisters, and parents, and family and relatives. Very especially, Lord, we remember the departed soul of Miriam Burki, the soul of Bella Fernandez, the soul of Victoria Sebastian, and the soul of P.J. Satish. And also we pray the souls in purgatory offered by our Sharon family. We pray the soul of George Victoria, the soul of all the brothers, sisters, be not remembered. Lord, those who are departed will come to you, welcome them, forgive them, accept them, Lord. And also, we all who have died in your mercy, welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy, Lord, families gathered here, those who are part of the Holy Eucharist, participating through the live channels, and the families who are praying, especially those family, those who ask us to pray, to whom you promised our prayers, we place them on the altar. Those who are sick, those who need your healing and deliverance, we offer to you on this altar. Very especially, Lord, we pray for all the victims, all those who have become so weak in this COVID-19 and become a victim for it. Lord, deliver your people from physical ailment, from financial problem, from psychological defects. Lord, have mercy upon your people. Very especially we pray for the intention of Lakshmi for a marriage and deliver from all the evil. And also we pray for the intention of Robert and Paul Raj. Give success and blessing for these people. Lord, we offer Augustine and his family and all the families, very especially those who are asked to pray, we place them on this altar. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Strengthen us. Accept us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us all. We pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, his spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, St. Anthony, St. Francis Xavier, St. Ignatius of Loyola, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs with eternal life. May I praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said your apostles, peace I live in my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, our Savior to whom Ignatius Loyola dedicated, said, all for the greater glory of God. Let's offer whatever we have for the greater glory of God. The rest the Lord will make a way. Happy are those called the supper of this living God. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, 
and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe, right in our life. Amen. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe, I believe that you are present, that you are present in the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament, I love you, I love you above all things, above all things, and I desire earnestly, and I desire earnestly to receive you. To receive you into my soul. Into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come spiritually into my heart. Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you as you are already there. As you are already there in my heart, in my heart, and unite myself, and unite myself wholly to you, wholly to you. Never permit me, never permit me to be separated from you, to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Thus says the Lord, I have come to cast fire on the earth, and how I wish that it were kindled. Let us pray. May the sacrifice of praise that we have offered with thanksgiving in honor of St. Ignatius, O Lord, bring us to exalt your majesty without end through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer to St. Anthony. O, o loving, loving Saint, Saint Anthony, Anthony, you were a special witness of God's power and loving imitator of Jesus who received from God the special power of restoring lost things and patron of the poor, we lift up our prayers to you. We trustfully and confidently ask your aid in our present need. Help all of us in our daily struggles, giving us hope and peace. Pray for us, Saint Anthony, so that we may continue to grow in God's love. Intercede for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your family, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son.